Hi everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skill biscuit? And it's Saturday, happy Saturday. And if you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Last week, if you missed it, we talked about Killer Sofa. Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Actually, no, because when you hear the words killer sofa, you think it's about a sofa when actually it's just about a lazy boy with a face on it. And if you want to check that out, you can check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. I wasn't even going to do a Bad Movies in a Beat this week because 2020 be punching me in every parts of my life right now because it's a fun time. But one thing that has been kind of a saving grace is how awful uh, movies have been, cause they've just been keeping me sane. Today, I'm doing a movie that was so requested. Uh, thank you, cause I would have never known about this gym. It was feverishly requested on Twitter. If you would like to know the easiest way to send me movie requests, it's probably Twitter. I'm always checking my mentions. It's a great way to pass the time. So be sure to follow me on there to also I uh, hear about all the shenanigans. One movie that you've been requesting a lot of. Dangerous Lies. A new suspense thriller release from Netflix and you know how well they've done in the past. What happened? On a side note, I feel like Netflix at one point was making really good movies and then they said, this is too much work. We could we could make more money making garbage like Secret Obsession and Sarah Burgess and Tall Girl and, and ultimately Dangerous Lies. Speaking of Secret Obsession, I would definitely put this in the same category as Secret Obsession. One of the biggest qualms I have with that movie is simply because it does not make sense. I would actually say that this movie somehow was able to be made and make even less sense. I feel like it's shown in how the movie is performed. It, it's it's very apparent that the actors don't know why they're doing anything that they're doing. And it's just, it's just a laughable, confusing, frustrating mess. And honestly, I really appreciate it because it's a good way to not focus on the very real reasons why I'm annoyed in real life right now. Gotta find the positive. There's always a silver lining, my dude. But yes, the movie makes absolutely no sense and it's apparent that they didn't expect us to ask any questions. <laughs> they just wanted us to go along for a good time. But instead of like having a good time, we just end up at a ditch at the end of the movie. Just like how, what? The movie centers around a young married couple, Adam and Katie. Adam is a recently graduated student looking for a job and Katie is a waitress. They're going through financial troubles as you would imagine as a young new married couple. But during one of her shifts, there's actually a robbery that results in Adam taking down the robber. And very quickly, you can notice that the movie was definitely um, gonna be bad. It was gonna be awful because you're just looking at the shot choices and you're like, this was meant to be consumed. Like people were supposed to watch this movie. Interesting. Um, Adam's there and he's able to heroically take down the robber. Despite Adam being the hero of our time, that does not result in them making any money because four months later, they're still broke. Who'd have thought? So over the past few months, Katie has been working as a caregiver to an old man named Leonard to make some extra money. And for the life of me, I cannot remember where I'd seen him from. And then it finally clicked that he's the dad on, he's uh, Monica and Ross's dad on Friends. You're welcome. You probably, probably could have lived without me clarifying that. But like all old people, Leonard, kind of speaks in exposition. He's always talking about his life as if he's reading off his autobiography. Four months ago today, the agency sent you to my door, my new caretaker, companion, and friend. But yeah, the, the movie is just really weirdly written. And this isn't just with the old guy, but just in general, there's a lot of exposition. I've noticed that's a trend with bad movies. They're not good at just making a movie. There tends to be a lot of just linear speaking and it's just so weird. And if that wasn't enough of a problem, it doesn't help that the actors are pretty terrible too. Speaking of bad acting though, is it weird that I find this good? Because the worst actor on set is undoubtedly the black dude, which weirdly enough makes me happy. And let me explain. Cause you know the whole thing that like black people have to work harder to receive the same amount of accolades. There's something, dare I say comforting that he's such a bad actor, <laughs> like somewhat uplifting even that he was able to be black and mediocre and still got this job. <laughs> Is this advancement? What do you call that? Growth. But yeah, the couple's struggling and she ends up getting like a really good relationship 
with the guy that she was taking care of, again, Leonard. And he finds out that they're struggling financially and offers to give her some money. And she's like, no, I can't do that. I couldn't take your money. That's not right. They end up doing is reaching an agreement where kind of hire her husband under the table as a gardener because he didn't have a gardener anymore. He had a gardener a few years ago, but he suddenly just stopped coming to work one day. Now they hire the husband under the table because it's against her company who sent her out to this old dude because they think it's too much of a distraction. Soon thereafter, guess who's back? James from Twilight. Isn't this like the third movies he's been in <laughs> during this series? Is that just him? His entire career is just latching on to garbage films. Maybe I should go through his catalog like Noah Sense of a Woman and probably find even more trash movies because I'm noticing a pattern here. Comes to the door and he's like, hey, I'm a realtor, sell me this house. And Katie's at the door and she's like, uh, it's not for sale. The dude is still like living here. And he's like insisting in a way that's really weird. Cause first of all, who, that's not how realtors work. Flag number one, this random guy comes to your door and he's like, let me buy your house that you didn't put on the market. But this movie consists of a bunch of stupid people. So no one thought anything of it, of course. But in case they ever want to sell the house, he gives his card. I just thought about why that's stupid too. <laughs> There's so many reasons why this movie makes no sense. I'll get to why that's dumb if I remember to get to why that's dumb. Okay, so later Leonard gives Katie her check and it's $7,000. And she's like, oh my God, this is too much. And her husband is like, let's keep it. He gave us $7,000 and she's like, no, this is too much. You'll notice throughout the movie, uh, Katie's really annoying cause she's like this super martyr. And then Adam's really annoying cause he's like too much on the opposite side. They're both so exaggeratedly stupid, but just for different reasons. So they end up reaching an agreement where they're gonna pay off their bills. And if they wanna give the access back for some reason, they'll do it after they pay their bills. And they go to the bank because direct deposit isn't a thing in this world for some reason. And guess who's following them? James. What I find very interesting is that this movie at no point tried to hide that James is a bad guy. I'm calling him James cause we don't know what his name is in this movie, but he's following them to the bank and they feel no need to build any suspense around him. Like he's gonna look like the bad guy and he is the bad guy. So around the 23 minute mark, Leonard dies and Katie discovers his body, does not call the ambulance. <laughs> and instead just like brings her husband upstairs and they talk with the dead body just chilling in, in the room. She's crying um, and Adam notices a very conveniently placed key at uh, Leonard's fingertips that he thinks is more prevalent and more important right now. What would he need to keep locked up here? Cause he's like, I wonder what this is to. Time to go in a scavenger hunt. <laughs> Apparently this key is to a uh, treasure chest that this old man kept in his, <laughs> in his attic that is filled with old pictures and a whole lot of money. Again, they're going through this treasure chest instead of calling the ambulance <laughs> cause a whole dead person is in the house. Like I know they're supposed to be who we're cheering for in this movie, I guess. But like y'all some assholes, y'all going thrifting in his stuff and this dude just died like, but yeah, they discover all this money and they still have not called the ambulance and they go outside and they talk about whether or not they should keep it. Adam is like, well, it's not like he can use it. Tell the police about it. It's just gonna go to the government. He wanted to help us. Let him help us. And she is the mega martyr. And she says something along the lines of like, we would have to be careful. And I, don't know what that means. Like, does that mean take the money? I, I thought he did at first, but then later in the film, she kept acting like they didn't have the money and she didn't expect him to get the money. What does he need to be careful about if you don't think he's taking it? It's so confusing. Okay, so they finally call the police. I'm noticing a trend with these movies where there's always like a detective that already is suspicious of everything. There's a detective. I don't remember what her name is, but Lady, lady detective, I'm sorry. And she comes to like question the couple and you could tell through all the suspenseful music that she already feels like something's afoot. Soon thereafter, Katie wants to get back to work. So she wants to get to another person that would need her help as a caretaker. So she goes to her agency and they tell her, hey, we thought you would realize that we're not gonna put you on another client until they've finished investigating Leonard's death. 
And she's like, what do you mean? Are you trying to say I'm a suspect? He died because he was 80 something years old. And they're like, yeah, well, we can't put you on another person until they're done investigating. Meanwhile, Adam gets turned down from another job. And so what he decides to do, break into Leonard's house and uh, go count that money. No, I said count it, not take any. He just went up there to put it in organized piles. While he's up there Marie Kondoing the money that he could have just taken, uh, he hears a smashed window downstairs. For some reason, it does not occur to him that he's a black trespasser in someone's house. And so he goes to investigate. Not only does he go to investigate, he makes noises. Hello? And is swiftly met with a strike to the back of the head. He awakens to an empty house and the sound of his phone because whoever the trespasser is didn't kill him. I mean, if you're going to beat him in the back of the head and knock him out, you might as well finish the job. On the phone is Katie. She rushes to the house, continues to say something along the lines of be careful. I told you to be careful. Well, how, what does that even mean? Are you saying don't take the money? Or are you saying to take it? Like I, those aren't words that are listed in action in this context. And Adam's like, hey, there's somebody else out there looking for the money. And that is stupid as well because if you're looking for the money you could have just killed them you'd have you'd have more time to do it they decide that their best course of action is to take the money and put it in a safety deposit box at the bank what i'm pretty sure it would not happen like that because because <laughs> banks would still want to know what you're putting in there like what if it was a bomb like they're not gonna check to see what you're put. And if you're putting that much money, wouldn't you have to like deposit it into a bank account? Like they're not gonna let you house $100,000, are they? I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, they take this money and put it in a safety deposit box and guess who's still watching? James. We still don't know what his name is, by the way. So we're back talking with the detective lady. Um, Earlier in the film, Katie, said that Leonard had always said he wanted to be cremated and sprinkled his ashes in the garden. And the detective is like, okay, well, he has no family. He has no children. He never married. Who's going to pay for his cremation? And they offered to do it. They soon thereafter have a funeral for Leonard where this very pretty Asian woman comes in and she introduces herself as Julia Byron Kim. We are 30 plus episodes into this freaking series and this is the first time we've had an Asian person in an American film with a last name that was Asian. <laughs> Granted, it's hyphenated, but I'll still take it. I will never understand how that is like one of the more controversial things I've said, which is like Asians aren't allowed to have anything indicative of their Asian-ness in films, i.e. a last name. And people were like, well, Asians have non-Asian last names sometimes. I'm not saying they don't, but why is this the first time we've had a not, we've had an Asian person with an Asian last name. By the way, they never really explained why her name needed to be hyphenated either. They loosely did, which is still kind of like, still a little bit why. It does nothing for the story, by the way, being hyphenated. She could have just been Julia Kim, but Hey, this is closer. It's 2020, everything's falling apart, I'll take it. But anyway, she comes in during the funeral and says she's the lawyer of the late. And she's like, hey, when he died, he left his entire home and estate to you. Again, he had no children, he had no family, so take it. Now, upon inheriting the house, Adam further proves that he's incredibly annoying because his first idea is ball out. Let's buy cars, let's buy things we don't need. Let's go on a million vacations, let's do it all. Whereas Katie is kind of like, hey man, this money kind of came out of nowhere, we can do smart things with it. Also, there's something quite suspicious about coming in, buying new cars and stuff with cash, which I feel like shouldn't matter. They just wanna make a sale, sis. They don't care if you got a hook in, if you stole it from your baby mama, they just wanna make a sale, sis. Speaking of stupid, we get a scene where Adam gets an anonymous call to come down to the police station. And when he gets there, they're like, yeah, we didn't call you down here. Instead of maybe it was a mistake and just leaving, he talks to the detective from earlier because apparently she's the only detective in that area. <laughs> she's like only person. And he's like, yeah, I'm here because 
you guys wanted another statement about the guy at the beginning of the movie, the burglar. And they're like, no, we don't need another one, especially not now, because he did. The dude that robbed the, was trying to rob the diner is dead now. But for some reason, him coming down for that makes him look more suspicious to her. Note I said more suspicious. I don't know why she had her initial suspicions and she only had it for the guy. I wonder why. But him coming down there for some reason makes her even more suspicious that something is afoot. Anyway, while he's away, guess who comes to visit the house again? James. Uh, well, he doesn't just come to visit the house. This dude is in the backyard just smelling her roses and stuff. He's still real aggressive. He like, sell me your house. And she's like, mm. No. Why are you here again? Why are you still here? But also no one responds to him strongly enough in my opinion. Ain't nobody screaming stranger danger. He in your backyard. He ain't even at your front porch. He in your backyard. Sniffing your roses. Ah. As he gives his anime bad guy monologue, he, he says how he knows that the old guy is already dead because he's been checking the obituaries. Now when Adam gets home, he is by no means as, as uncomfortable about the guy being all creepy at his house. Babe, trust me. The only thing this guy cares about is when he's losing on commission. Don't marry stupid, guys. Looks fade, but stupid is forever. But yeah, he's way too casual about that information. He's like, he's just, he just like wants a commission. I'm trying to figure out, should I just skip this whole part? Cause it's a whole bunch of just, a whole lot of faffing in the middle. <laughs> whole lot of faffing about. Basically the detective is still suspicious of only Adam. Uh, Katie and Adam end up getting in fights. That ends with him saying, hey, I'm being followed by that realtor dude, whose name is Hayden. We're an hour into the movie <laughs> and, we're, and we're finding out that his name is Hayden. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna get to the part where this movie truly falls apart. Katie's in the attic, right? She discovers more conveniently placed items, specifically some old checks from the gardener that used to work for the old man before he died. She also finds a body <laughs> in the attic. One, you telling me those thin sheets of paper have just stayed there in like a, like an airy attic for how long ago was it that he worked there? Two years ago? I don't know how that was supposed to tell us who the dead body is. <laughs> you see checks and you see a dead body. Those two things don't have, don't have to be related, but okay. Um, but more importantly, he's been dead for two years in a ceiling, not embalmed, not mummified. He's just been up in your ceiling for two years fermenting like kimchi. Y'all ain't smell nothing. <laughs> nothing. Y'all ain't smell nothing. He's been up there curing. You could peel his skin off and make digga and you're up there like, oh wow, we just found a body. Also, you see like a little part of his arm and he hasn't like badly decomposed in two years. How could you even look at it and identify it as a human being at this point? My dude is a sauerkraut of a human at this point. <laughs> In good old this movie fashion, no one calls any forms of authority. She just calls Adam and Adam is a very curious cat. And he goes and he looks at the body and he sees that the body has been shot again in two years. If, if a body's two years old, just decomposing in the elements of your ceiling, for instance, you wouldn't even be able to recognize it at this point. Not only does he find a body that's been shot, he also finds diamonds just a lot of diamonds. Soon thereafter, the doorbell rings. Katie's boss, who found out that she was having her husband work under the table, and he assumes that that means she did something horrible to the guy that died. He comes, he comes to the house, banging on the door. I'm gonna call the police on you. You, I can't believe you took advantage of that old man. You thought it was a good idea to go to her house in person to tell her? You think she's done something criminal so you give her a heads up? On a side note, I wrote so many notes about this movie because there's so much that doesn't make sense. So as I'm like going through my notes, I'm just skipping stuff because you're starting to realize there's so much in this movie that just straight up does not matter. For some reason, they discover a body in diamonds and they assume that the reason why this person had diamonds is because they stole them. What, how they got, what, what if, they, what if they were already up there? How do those two things correlate? You see a body and some diamonds, those don't necessarily have anything to do with each other, but they like, he stole them. They have no proof at all, but that's the narrative they're going with. He got murdered because he stole diamonds while he was working as a gardener to lie low.
okay. <laughs> For some reason, Katie's old boss breaks into their house at night. Adam, who at some point acquired a gun, we don't know when and where, but he has a gun now, goes out when he hears someone breaking in, confronts the person, it is the old boss, he gets startled, falls down the stairs and dies. <laughs> we never, <laughs> I should, I'm sorry. We never find out why he came to the house. We never find out if he had anything to do with the diamond heist. We never find out what he was there for. Again, the only detective in that world apparently comes to top. And for some reason, this guy dying after breaking into their home makes Adam more suspicious to the detective? Wonder why. And she's talking to Katie and she's like, Adam is the problem here. I don't know what that has to do with the guy that broke into their house, but she's like, hey, I'm trying to help you, Katie. The detective does some sloppy work in saying that it's suspicious that she got the will after the old man was cremated. Wouldn't that make Katie more suspicious? <laughs> but no. Only Adam. She's also saying how because he was cremated, she couldn't actually know his cause of death. She couldn't do an autopsy. If you were doing an ongoing investigation, why did you allow them to cremate him? There wasn't like some reason why they had to cremate him immediately. They could have done an autopsy. You didn't do your due diligence. So whose fault is that, Red? Adam is more suspicious because I didn't do my job. Oh my God, I think this is basically the first time in Bad Movies in a Beat history I've finished my makeup and there's still so much more to talk about how this movie is awful. <laughs> so Katie goes to the lawyer and they both go to the bank where they put all the money and Adam's taking it. And the lawyer is like, wow, he took the money. He's gonna take that and the diamonds and go to the cops and turn you in. I don't know why they assume that, but okay. Police find the body of the sauerkraut dude in a dumpster somewhere. I don't know who moved it. I guess Adam, I, I don't know. And they connect it with Leonard's house somehow. Katie and Adam finally talk and she's like, oh my God, he wasn't gonna run off without me. He actually was waiting for us to go together. Adam finally thought to check into the extremely suspicious man, you know, the one that's been following him around and popping up in his backyard and popping up at his house. Yeah, he finally thought to look in on him and apparently he's not a real estate agent. He's actually an ex-convict that went to jail for two years for jewelry heists. Uh, he had an accomplice who was the uh, human kombucha in the ceiling. It was never found and diamonds that were never recovered. They assume for some reason that Hayden, the realtor, shot his accomplice. I don't know why they know that either. He, I guess, just left him in and the addict, how did he get in the attic? Which if he, sh <laughs> wait, I just noticed so many things that don't make sense. If Hayden shot the guy and put him in the attic, wouldn't he also know where the diamonds are? <laughs> and after that, Hayden created a new character for himself as a realtor without changing his name. He kept his name as Hayden. So all you had to do is look him up and it was that easy. You know that he's an ex-convict who had an accomplice who tried to steal some diamonds. Who'd have thought we could have just did that in the first three minutes of the movie and this movie would would have been over. This bastard didn't even bother to use a fake name. What do you think, we weren't smart enough to figure this out? I mean, there's only 15 minutes left <laughs> and you just got here, so they might be right. <laughs> so we're at the final dumbass stretch and the Hayden dude just breaks into the house, threatens to shoot Katie. I don't know why he didn't just shoot people in the beginning and just search the house. Again, it would have been easier, sir, but okay. But if they were intelligent, this would not be a Netflix original film. So hello. There's a standoff, Adam gets shot. Katie doesn't for some reason. <laughs> And with his last energy, Adam is able to shoot Hayden and kill him. Um, Adam does not survive his wounds, he, he's dead. For some reason, because no one locks their doors and people really love to come in at very opportune times, the lawyer just comes into the house. <laughs> Again, no one calls the ambulance, you know. You know, <laughs> you're crying over your lost husband, but he might've made it if he would've just caught the ambulance but it's more important to talk to the lawyer. Katie, for some reason, feels like these sequence of events mean that Hayden killed Leonard with an overdose. Don't know how she got there either. She say it's because she found an empty pill bottle, but that means nothing. Why did Hayden shoot Doyle? Girl, your husband died, who cares? This, I've said this before, anybody can make a movie at this point. 
let your dreams fly, girl. You stuck inside, write that screenplay because anybody, and I mean anybody, can get some get some garbage on Netflix at this point. But wait, there's another twist because God, this movie won't end. <laughs> the longest 90 minutes of my life. The lawyer is actually a bad guy. The whole evil monologue where she was in cahoots with the bank robbers, uh, the jewelry robbers for some reason. But she's an actual lawyer, so like why? <laughs> Why? She also faked the will that gave the house to Katie to cover up Leonard's death. I don't know how that does that. It just gives her a house. Actually, wouldn't that have made it worse? Wouldn't Leonard have just died and then no one's there and now you can search the house? Cause that's the premise of the movie. Everyone wants to search the house for this money and the diamonds. When Leonard was alive, he would hear people like walking in the house and it would make him nervous. And that was apparently Hayden looking for the diamonds. Again, if you would have just killed everybody, you could have looked for the diamonds. I don't, if you're willing to kill him anyway, cause that's what he was. If he killed the old man, he's willing to kill people. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. Oh my God. And you shot your colleague or whatever, apparently. Again, the doors aren't locked. So the detective just, just walks in without backup. By the way, I don't know if she has a warrant. She just strolls up in her house. She shoots the lawyer. Uh, fast forward, Adam's dead. She's pregnant uh, and the detective comes to tell her that the case is now closed and Adam will not be considered a criminal even though he didn't have a, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't have a record. So why would he be considered? A criminal, he's a black man in America. Um, <clears throat> also, why is she telling her this in person? You can't call. The detectives have searched the house they never found those diamonds. We never find out what happened to the $100,000 either. Oh, wait, there's the diamonds. The last we saw Adam, he was rushing to leave the house with his wife, right? So he took the time to bury the diamonds in the garden instead of just taking them with <laughs> or leaving them where they are. Yeah. Okay. I've seen very few movies this sloppily sewn together. It's a patchwork of remarkably bad storytelling. Not to mention so many unanswered questions. Why was a lawyer working so closely with smugglers? What would she get out of that? Why was Adam so stupid? Why is Katie still allowed to live in that house if it was a fake will? These and many others will never be explained. I don't know how this is possible, but between this and Secret Obsession, this movie makes even less sense. That's all for today, folks. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you'd like to recommend more movies for bad movies and beat, feel free to put them down in the comment section, or you can tweet me, because I see those a lot. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. Bye.